What's up, nerds? Radio Free Hammer Hall back with a completely unnecessarily comprehensive guide to the beautiful Fegnet Narl Maw. Here we have a quick picture of the model, in case you happen to uh, not own one, haven't taken a gaze upon it. Gaze upon its glory. It is one of the finest things. And I think it is underutilized for its potential by many Nurgle players. So I want to take a deep dive into this bad boy. A uh, quick look at the War Scroll. Uh, you don't use ordinary scenery rules with it. It consists of one model. Uh, in the charge phase, Nurgle units within seven inches can uh, attempt to charge even if they ran in the same turn. Uh, and at the start of the hero phase, roll a die for each unit within three inches of any feculent gnarl maw. On a four up, the unit suffers one mortal wound. And Nurgle units, of course, are unaffected by the ability. Uh, and, well, this is really hard to read because I snipped it out of something else. Uh, but this is basically the uh, rules on the setup of it. You get one Feculent Gnarl Maw for free uh, in your initial setup of the army. Uh, after you place all of the terrain, but before territories are chosen or an army is set up, you can set up one Feculent Gnarl Maw anywhere on the battlefield more than one inch from any other terrain feature. Very important thing to note here is that this happens before you choose which side of the table you're on or how the table is divided. So you have to put this on the table without knowing where you're going to set up. Very important note in the proper setup of this. Uh, you don't want to get caught out with this in a tournament. Um, that could be bad. Um, and just some quick notes on what else this does. Uh, you receive uh, D3 Contagion points for each Feculent ma Gnarl Maw that has no enemy models within 3 inches. And then units uh, that you summon can be set up within 12 inches of the Feculent Gnarl Maw and more than 9 inches away from enemy models. So, uh, that's the basics. Uh, so again, quick summary. You set it up at the start of the game, after the train is paced, before the sides are chosen. Your units within 7 inches can run in charge. Uh, if you have no enemy units within 3 inches during your hero phase, you get D3 contagion points. If there are enemy units within 3 inches at the beginning of the hero phase, roll a D6 for each. Four up receives a mortal wound. Uh, and then you can summon units within 12 inches of it. So that's the really basic, on the face, what this thing does rules-wise. So the absolute most common question that I see asked over and over again in forums, how many of these things do I need to own? I think everyone has sort of like PTSD from... Sylvaneth requiring a million Wildwoods. And the basic answer that I would give is that it sort of depends on the lists that you like to run. But two or three is really all you need to own. Um, I personally own two. Um, I will probably get a third at some point. Um, I just haven't been really running lists that might need it. And I've never run into a situation where I was like, man, I really wish I had a third Gnarl Maw to uh, summon at this point in the game. It's just never come up. So, just to clarify here, you definitely want one. It's free in your list, so you always want that. Having a second Feculent Gnarl Maw is good for utility purposes, um, and I will talk more about that later on in this video. Um, 
The maybe is if you're running uh, Horticulus Slimux, he gives you an extra tree for free. Uh, so that would give you a reason to have a third. Um, four or more. Um, uh, unlikely, I would say. Um, I would reference my video on Contagion Points. Um, I think it's generally not worth it. Um, you know, the four is like that weird outside chance of you're running Horticulus, so you have two trees, and then you have two extra in the reserve, one for maybe summon, and then one for weird outside corner case that comes up once in a blue moon that you need to summon a fourth Feculent Narlma on the battlefield for some reason. But I would say three is probably the limit for normal situations. Um, I do not like the uh, Menagerie Battalion. So, um, you know, it, it, there's more on that in my video on Contagion Points, and I'll touch on that a little bit more later. Um, so how do you get more Feculent Gnarl Maws? Your first one's free. You can get one from the uh, ability on Horticulus Slimux. You can uh, run the Nurgle's Menagerie Battalion to get a tree from Horticulus every turn. And you can spend seven Contagion Points to summon a Feculent Gnarl Maw using the ordinary summoning rules. So these are all of the ways, the four ways, that you can get a tree. Really, it's only three, and Nurgle's Menagerie just lets you do more of what Horticulus already does. So the model itself. Um, I see people trying to make alternative models for this and I would definitely pose a word of caution about that. Um, this model has an irregular footprint much like the Sylvaneth Wildwoods. So if you're going to be making a conversion or a proxy for these, make sure you get the correct footprint. It's roughly the size of one of the oval bases. Uh, it's about four and a half inches by three and a half inches. Um, but again, that shape is irregular. Um, a lot of TOs are probably going to strike down your proxy if it's just on an oval base. Um, it's not that big of a difference, but it's just enough that um, you can safely say it matters. So, also due to the design of the model, it's basically functionally impassable terrain. Uh, you really can't like land a flying unit on it. You really can't go over it because it's kind of tall. Uh, you you really have to go around it. Um, and there's not even really any area on the base to kind of get like models on top of it anywhere, like kind of on the sides. It, you might be able to get like one hero that's on a small base. Uh, but that's about it. So your general usage. You get D3 Contagion points per turn per Feculent Gnarl Maw on the battlefield that doesn't have uh, enemy units within 3 inches. You get a permanent zone of running and charging somewhere on the battlefield around your Feculent Gnarl Maw. It gives you an area to summon. Now here is where it gets interesting. It's because it is, I would say, functionally speaking, an impassable piece of terrain. What happens here is that it really disrupts movement and line of sight. Um, and in addition, it, this can give mortal wounds. Um, I, I, what I've found interesting is that it's this weird psychological game. A lot of your opponents, I find, even though that you tell them, like, basically read word for word what this thing does, 
uh, they'll stay out of the three inches and let you get that D3 contagion per turn just to avoid the 50% chance of a mortal wound, which I don't understand, but, you know, it's an interesting mind game that it plays with your opponent. It makes it an even larger area of movement disruption. And, of course, it's, you know, it's fairly tall, so it can disrupt line of sight for shooting, so you can, you know, hide some heroes behind it, potentially. So, on Contagion, I'm not going to go too deeply into this, because, I again, I already did a whole video on it. Um, never, ever spend Contagion points to get a Feculent Gnarl Maw to earn more Contagion points. The payoff on it just doesn't work. Um especially because it can get turned off by your opponent standing next to it. Um, and really, like, a smart opponent knows that it, there's just not enough disincentive to crowd the tree to uh, not do it. Like, the contagion's definitely worth more to you than the mortal wounds hurt your opponent, um, and players that have a lot of experience against Nurgle will recognize that and just, you know, hump your tree. So, where the hell do you put this thing? Um, I would say it depends on a few factors, and you need to place it based on what purpose you really want to use that Feculent Gnarl Moth for. Uh, are you looking to get contagion from it? Are you looking to do run and charge from it? Are you looking to do board disruption? Are you looking to do summoning? Uh, and always remember, it goes down before you choose sides. So if you put it in a deployment zone, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be your deployment zone. Um... And, of course, keeping the scenario and objectives in mind when you're choosing placement, um, that is very important. Um, I have definitely used it before as sort of um, a disruption for certain objectives, um, you know, blocking up certain passages. Um, also, a, a thing to think about is, you know, if you're running Horticula Slimex in your list, you're going to get a free tree, so either you're going to, like, double down on Contagion and Summoning, uh, or you're going to throw one out and use that for the run and charge and the board disruption, uh, and then use the tree that Horticulus makes uh, to bolster your Contagion. So, if you're placing for Contagion, um, you really want to avoid putting the Feculent Gnarl Maw in a place where your opponent is likely to have models. You want to make them go out of their way to put um, a model next to your Feculent Gnarl Maw. This means it's going to probably, if you really want that insurance policy on getting that contagion every turn uh you might want to put it on a board edge you might want to put it um in a place that is going to be far away from the objectives uh deployment zones i mean that's definitely a gamble you have a chance of getting it in your own deployment zone uh if it goes in your opponent's deployment zone uh you're probably not getting the contagion from it but you are disrupting uh, where they're going to be placing their troops. Um, so that creates an interesting problem for some armies. So for the run and charge, you definitely want it, uh, you know, somewhere fairly centrally located on the battlefield. Um, and you want to have a really clear lane for your units to get through. Especially if you have larger size units uh, or things on larger size bases. Um, you also want to try and maximize the usable area that it has. So 
you don't want other like functionally impassable terrain uh, within that seven inch radius around the feculent gnarl maw because that just reduces the functional area of it. Um, waiting to one side or another on the battlefield or a little towards one deployment zone, a little further away from another deployment zone. Um, it depends on what you're going for. If you wait to, like, you know, uh, all, all the way, like, on one side of the board, it really telegraphs to your opponent what your game plan is, like, that you're going to try and zoom across the board on that side. Um, you can also do it as, like, a head fake to your opponent and deploy more to the other side. Um, it, you know, it depends on the situation. But in general, I would say you want this somewhere kind of in the middle of the board. So for board disruption, the Feculent Narama, again, it's effectively impassable terrain. So it's really going to do a good job of blocking up movement. So a lot of armies that are, you know, foot sloggers that don't have movement shenanigans, that don't have flyers... Uh, things with monsters uh, are another uh, good point. Uh, it really can disrupt greatly what your opponent can do uh, as far as moving around the battlefield. I've used this to really great effect, uh, especially in certain scenarios where it just can create a massive blockage if there is enough terrain on the board. Uh, you can use it to guard objectives. You know, that extra mortal wound potentially every turn is a little bit of a deterrent in certain uh, scenarios, you know, particularly the ones where you uh, need a hero hanging out in the middle of the board. A lot of heroes are, you know, five wounds and don't have any protection against mortal wounds. So it's just going to be able to get those guys down a little bit faster. It also is going to reduce the area that your opponent has available to do deep strikes. And I would definitely put a big asterisk next to this and say, this is even more powerful when you go first and you happen to roll high on your D3, and you get that seven contagion points turn one, and you can drop fly of plague bearers in the middle of the board somewhere, and now your opponent has even less territory that they're able to deep strike in. Uh, this is also a fun game against Sylvaneth players because you can block out where they might want to put their wild woods in disrupt and restrict where they're able to do that. So if you're looking to maximize summoning, um, you want to remember that this is going to combine with what you want to do with Contagion, but you also want to kind of balance it out with being able to place the models that you summon in a relevant place. So you want it maybe a little bit out of the way, but close enough to a relevant place that when you set up models, uh, they're going to be useful. You know, they're potentially going to make a charge right out of the gate. Um, you need to, again, balance with the objectives. Um, you know, it's always interesting. You know, another thing that I have definitely done is summon models directly onto an objective because I put an objective... You know, within 12 inches of the Feculent Gnarl Maw, and then Plague Bearers just pop up on top of it. Um, it's your unkillable location to summon as well, and that can be very useful. Your only other locations that you can summon from are your heroes, so if all of your heroes die, you don't totally lose the ability to summon things. Um, its size and the 12 inch radius make it hard for your opponent to just crowd it out with uh, a small number of models. They need, you know, either several heroes 
or kind of like a cloud of infantry hanging out around it to really prevent your summoning. So some tips and tricks. Um, it can be super gross. Um, if your opponent does not like gross things and this is staring them in the face the whole game and you paint yours up in a nice gross fashion, uh, it might be a little distracting for your opponent. I'm not going to lie. This one is inspired by Mr. Vince Venturella, who really hates Nurgle stuff. Uh, so shout out to you, Vince. You have inspired uh, my thoughts on playing mind games with the Feculent Gnarl Maw. You can uh, make a gambit with uh, putting it in a deployment zone. So it'll either protect your contagion or it's going to do weird things to what your opponent decides to do with their army. They might have to hold back units to prevent you from summoning behind their lines. They might have the way they want to deploy disrupted by having stuff there. Um, it's just like this weird mind game. Um, you don't necessarily know how your opponent's going to react to it. Uh, and one of my favorite moves with the Feculent Gnarl Maw, I like to call the Slingshot. Um, and that is you spend Contagion points on summoning a Feculent Gnarl Maw but you summon it not for the contagion, but for that run and charge ability. So you move, you know, a hero into range of a, a unit that you want to run in charge. You summon up a feculent gnarl maw. Now that unit can run in charge when your opponent wasn't previously expecting that to happen. Uh, so it's a nice little surprise reach across the battlefield. Um, can take some people mightily off guard. Um, I've used this many times to great effect. People don't see it coming. They're like, wait, you can summon another Feculent Gnarl Maw and do what now? And you can actually run in charge when you do this? Yeah. So it's it's a fun little trick. I like it a lot. Um, I use it a lot. And I think this is one of the particular things that people need to use more. So Nurgle's Menagerie. I just want to quickly uh, touch on this. So, I don't like Nurgle's Menagerie for uh, building a summoning-oriented army, which kind of feels like what it's supposed to be meant for, but I think that you sucks, personally. What is interesting is that you can end up with a whole lot of Feculent Gnarl Maws on the battlefield, and that can really clog up lots of lanes of traffic. So if you build a list that is running a lot of drones and puscoils, which fly and can just go over your Feculent Gnarl Maws, um, it might be an interesting list concept. I don't know if it's really all that good, but it's an interesting idea that I just kind of wanted to throw out there. Maybe somebody will buy like eight feculent gnarl maws and try this out and then eBay them after it fails. But, you know, I just thought that this is a, an interesting idea that I had been thinking about. Uh, so some closing thoughts on this. Uh, your need for buying these is pretty limited. You know, two or three is all you really need. So don't buy like six or seven thinking that you're going to make a ton of these throughout the game. They are not Sylvaneth Wildwoods. Uh, don't ever spend Contagion to try and get more Contagion. That's just a bad idea. Um... Remember what your goal with the Feculent Gnarl Maw is in the particular game and list that you are using. Um, whether you're using it to generate Contagion and to summon, if you're looking for that run and charge bonus, or if you're looking for board disruption and mind games. Um, just remember what you're using it for. And if you're concentrating on one particular thing in a game, don't don't expect it to do the other things well. 
Um, and just really my final thought on it is when you really look at everything that this can do, it is very flexible. And it's flexible in an already very flexible army. I think Nurgle has uh, a really great toolbox with the cycle of contagion and the spells that you have available to you. Um, and it's interesting because I'll run a list that is basically just Blight Kings uh, in maybe a blog, blob of Plague Bearers and summon some Plague Bearers uh, and then like a great unclean one and a couple of other heroes. So that sounds like a really boring list, but between the Cycle of Contagion and the Feculent Gnarl Maw and the spells at your disposal, uh, there's a lot of interesting things that you can do. Uh, it's a very flexible army. The Gnarl Maw is a really flexible tool. So think about it. Think about what you want to do, how you want to incorporate it into your list. Because it's not as simple as you might think. So that's it for now, kids. I will talk to you all later.